Hello, and welcome to AHA VTS Clipcast on Static versus Dynamic Routing. My name is Aleem HLE, and oh by the way, I'm this handsome son of a gun to the right. As network professionals throughout our daily activities, we take a look at packets or information that traverses across our network from point A to point B. And if we have a new build up, say to another building, we have to make choices on how we want to route that information. And also, Let's just say that we have designated traffic that we want to move across our network via a specific path of our choosing. Well, how do we do that? And more importantly, what is the underlying transport that makes this happen? Well, in this clipcast, we're going to briefly talk about two of the four ways routers move packets, data, or information across the network. We're going to talk about what is static routing. Then we're going to talk about what is dynamic routing. And last, we're going to talk about static versus dynamic routing and the difference between the two. So, let's get started. So let's talk about static routing. Well, static routing is an administratively invoked route of one-way path communication, meaning that a network engineer or an administrator manually enters the routing information into each router in order to move traffic onto or across the network. And static routes can be a very effective method for small enterprises and simple networks where changes are frequent. And the administrative distance or trustworthiness of these types of routes is one. So let's illustrate this with a simple example that is shown on the screen. Say we want to create a static route on router 1 to communicate with the network 172.16.1.0/24 that sits behind switch 1. How is this accomplished? Well, a manual entry is added into the router, in this case router 1, that points to either the next hop IP address, which in this case is 100.100.100.1, or the outgoing interface that is connected to that next hop. In this case, it'll be fast ethernet 0/0. The following syntax is what is entered into Router 1. And as a note, these are Cisco IOS specific commands and syntax. Now, one question that you may be asking yourself is, what about the networks that sit behind Router 2? How do we get those networks to communicate, let's just say, with a network behind Switch 1 of 173.116.2.0 24? Well, remember, Static routes are one-way communication paths, so whatever commands or syntax we use to get the networks behind router 1 to communicate with the network 173.16.1.0/24, we will have to do somewhat of the same in order for the networks that sits behind router 2 to communicate with the network 173.16.2.0/24 that sits behind switch 1. And here is an example of those configurations. Well, as you can see, so far, this may be time-consuming, but beneficial as well. However, for larger networks, you may not want to do this all the time, and perhaps not even at all. And here is where dynamic routing comes into play. In some respects, the inverse of static routing is dynamic routing. Well, dynamic routing involves the exchange of routing information via periodic updates, and or responses to changes on the network. A routing protocol is what is configured on a router to start such a process. After configuring the routing protocol, there is little or no administration afterwards. And there are a few routing protocols that are used on networks, such as RIP, RIP version 2, OSPF, EIGRP, and ISIS, with OSPF and EIGRP being the most popular and the administrative distance is specific to each routing protocol. Now dynamic routing is more suitable for medium to large enterprises since there may be hundreds of addresses and constant changes to the environment. If a change is needed on the network or a link is unavailable, the routing protocol configured will converge accordingly by sending updates to its peer routers to find another path to the destination network, adding a new network, or removing it altogether. So let's illustrate this with my simple example that I have on the screen here. Let's say we want to configure basic OSPF for the networks behind router 1 
to communicate with the networks behind router 2. In this case, we would have to configure each device accordingly with the proper configurations to start the OSPF process and the dynamic routing. Now, as you can see, configuring a routing protocol eliminates some of the overhead as far as syntax is concerned and bidirectional communication is achieved more efficiently than static routing. When deciding on how to route on a network, we need to understand the difference between static and dynamic routing and the pros and cons. Listed are some considerations that we want to take into account when choosing which direction we want to go. So, if we want more control of our routing capabilities, we will choose static routing. If we want the routing process themselves to learn the routes on their own, we will choose dynamic routing. And of course, if we're dealing with a small enterprise or a small office home office, more than likely we will choose static routing. However, if we're in a medium to large enterprise, we will go to dynamic routing protocol. If we want to be more tedious with our granular controls, we will go with the static routing. And more flexibility in the fact that we want faster convergence in the event that a network has failed or a destination is unreachable, we will go with dynamic routing. With security, well, it depends. Obviously, with security, with static routing, we know exactly what routes we'll be adding into the routing table. But with dynamic routing, the security advantage is that when it pairs to a neighboring router, they can exchange authentication information, such as MD5. And again, if we want the routers to update themselves in the event that a network has failed or a device is unreachable and anything as such, we will go to dynamic routing as opposed to static routing, where we would have to go into each router at each hop and manipulate the routing table themselves. While well, static and dynamic routing are what are used as the underlying transport of data between end stations and devices. You can have a purely static environment or a dynamic one or a hybrid using both. You can also visit ahavts.com and look out for future clips, flicks, clipcasts on these topics and much, much more. I hope this clipcast on static versus dynamic routing was informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.